Porto fans are unhappy. Yes, this squad, FC Porto, as you guys know, they are one of the strongest, if not the strongest team in Portugal. Won the championship over 30 times already. But as we speak, one of their best players is going to Saudi. Yes, Otavio has signed with Al Nasser and the fans are slowly turning against the club, not necessarily seeing the right signings being made while all of their best talents are just leaving Porto. Last season, it was Fabio Vieira who went over to the likes of, um, was it again, Arsenal, right? Then you had Vitinha who has gone to PSG. And now this season, you might pot potentially lose out on Otavio and Taremi as well. Taremi, their best striker in a long time, and he could be going too. Lots of clubs still linked to him. So what do we do? We dive in into an FC Porto rebuild. And as I'm recording this, their game is about to start as well. So you can see my reaction to that stuff. But we are going to be diving in into this rebuild with Sal, the main man himself. Porto, I'm trying to help you. Let me do it the right way. Oh, go on then. As we speak, Porto have taken the lead and it was uh, Tony Martinez scoring the goal for them against Farense, a team that is one of the weaker sides in Portugal this season for sure. But if you take a look on the left-hand side here, Galeno is the one that got the assist. And this, the team that you're seeing, is the actual starting 11 of today as I'm recording this. And obviously the highest rated player and the most valued one is probably Diogo Costa. He is an amazing goalkeeper that is already playing for the Portuguese national team and has a bright future ahead of him. I am excited to see where he ends up. But right now, as we speak, I can't think of one spot where he would fit in perfectly. I'd say as the next Neuer. Once Neuer is done, he can come to Bayern. That'd be nice. Uh, but yeah, this is the starting 11 of them as we speak. And there are new players in his team. Navarro has joined them from Gil Vicente. He is a new signing, 24-year-old striker. I wonder what this entails for Taremi because obviously they do have Martinez, they do have Eva Nilsson, and then Navarro could easily slot in there if they do go ahead and decide to let go of Taremi. Now, Varela is a beast. This is a top, top talent joining in from Boca Juniors, a CDM that you guys need to watch out for. Just like Enzo Fernandez coming over from the Argentinian League. I wouldn't say he's as good as Enzo, for sure not. But I'd say defensively, he's probably the better one of them too. So ideally, at some point, I would like to have him in the start 11. That is for sure. Pepe, he is 39. Cardoso, he's 28. Marcano, he's 35. That defense is way too old. And we need to fix a lot of issues in this Porto squad. But at the same time, you have some top, top talents like Gabriel Veron and such. So we have a couple of things to work with here. But let's start off with the transfer window. Let's do it. The first signings have to be centre-backs. I'm sorry, I can't be playing 30-plus year olds there. And David Carmo just hasn't made it at Porto. He has not been able to establish himself against a bunch of old centre-backs. And look. I'm not saying Pepe is bad or anything. You have some mentality beasts in there. But physically speaking, Carmo should have easily been able to get past those lads. But he wasn't able to. So I'm going for Valpai, who has obviously gone down with Leicester City into a division below. And Carmo goes the other way. We're going to give him a new lease of life in a different country. So that is why I have done this deal. And... Here he comes. I am going to put him straight into the centre-back position. I really, really do like him. Marcano, as much as I appreciate that you might be the captain or whatever. But we are going ahead and bringing in a new centre-back into this team. And we are youthening the centre-back position. Is that even a word? Well, it is now. The coach is shaking hands with his next centre-back joining the team. A blonde lad from Denmark. It is a Nelson. From Galatasaray, a very talented player, honestly. And Cardoso is going the other way. I know he was one of the younger ones, and by younger, I mean 28. But we have let him go, and we have brought in Nelson now. First up, I wanted to shore up the defense, and now we have done exactly that. Pepe, I'm sorry, you're 65 years old. Nelson comes in, takes over right there, and I believe this is going to be a good partnership. I really like this one. Nelson has a bit more pace, a bit more agility about him. And then Fais can be the one that just, you know, 
just does the proper defending. That's all it's going to take. Now, I have looked into news about Taremi, and I've seen that there were teams that were very interested in him, especially Inter, and teams have kind of pulled back from this situation. Now, there might be a, a spot for him that I personally think would be absolutely perfect uh, for Taremi, and that is Manchester United. Hoyland is injured. Manchester United strikers without Hoyland being fit are already looking terrible. I think Taremi would be the perfect ideal solution for them right now as we speak. And I'm telling you, if Taremi joins United at some point, there's no chance Hoyland actually gets a sniff at the starting 11. I'm saying that right now. Well, how did season one go, you might ask? Well, here's my answer. We are in the cup final. Taka Portuguesa. And here is the result. Come on, against Braga. It's a 3-2 victory. Marco Grujic, Navarro, and Taremi getting it done. So great success, Taremi, with the goal in the final. And by the way, as I'm watching the Porto game, they have conceded against one of the easiest matchups in the league at home. So yeah, defense, not so good. And good thing that we have gone ahead and improved it. Someone needs to help Diogo Costa, but hey, here we are now, my friends. Look at this squad. In terms of upgrades, Navarro got a nice upgrade, worked his way into the starting 11, past Martinez and also past Evan Nilsson, I might say. And then Pepe on the right has been doing all right, I guess. I've been using him and Galeno in the starting 11, haven't turned him into a right midfielder, but he has been playing there. Defensively, Joao Mario, I really like, but then again, obviously, he's kind of an offensive uh, right back, saying defensively, I like him, doesn't really fit there. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, he's a good one. And Nelson and Vice looking good. Sanusi, 79 rated, 25 years old. We could continue growing him into a good player, and Costa, obviously, class. On the bench, Veron has gone up nicely. Gonzalez has been struggling. Not been in the starting 11. Eustachio has taken over his position and he's been running the show alongside Varela. And we have swapped to a formation, which is the 4-4-2 holding, <laughs> which obviously allows us to play two CDMs. But uh, talking about defense and everything, let's talk about goals. Taremi, 33 and 12, 45 and 50. That is amazing. And then we have Navarro right here as I'm watching Barcelona is about to concede and they don't. Balde made a massive mistake. Oh my God, Barca nearly conceded. Testegen 1v1 save. He's good, ain't he? But hey, we have had a good season here. And I wonder, have we won the league title too? Because we have won the Taca Portuguesa. No, Benfica got it done. We still have work to do in Portugal. I've done a thing. I'm ready for a revolution. And I don't believe that Taremi should be at Porto forever. So I have let him go. And funnily enough, it is Inter that has signed him. 65 million for him. Pepe has left because I believe in Gabriel Veron and Galeno. And Evan Nilsson has left because I just, I just don't see it. I don't see why apparently Manchester United was willing to pay like 60 million last season. But generally speaking, those are the sales. And with these sales now, we can redo the team in a nice way. 186 million to spend. Let's have a bit of fun. Fun is good. A highly rated Portuguese striker that never played for any of the big Portuguese clubs. Yes, that's the one I'm going for. His name is Beto. He plays for Udinese. He did play for Portimonense at some point in Portugal. And that is his career path, basically. And Beth Beto is a big man that can definitely have a big impact on our team. He is basically my Taremi replacement. Comes in with an 81 rating, putting Martinez back on the bench and a loader next to him or Loader or whatever. Oh, it's actually an Englishman. Loader. Okay. Uh, well, then we have Beto and Navarro next to each other. Now the question becomes, what do we do with the rest of the millions? Now, I am very tempted to do something. I just don't know which spot to go for, though. I kind of like Estacchio, but I would like to have someone next to uh, Varela that does a little bit more on the offensive side and possibly a center midfielder. This next one might be someone that not a lot of you guys know, but Matteo Pessina has been loaned out from Atalanta to Monza, I believe. He should be back at Atalanta this season, or if he isn't, I don't know if he had like a buy clause, but Pessina is a player. 
that I really like in terms of his offensive qualities and just all-round qualities. He comes in into our team now as a center attacking mid. But as far as I know, if you change his position, he should be able to play center mid. Now, again, I'm not against Yostakio. He's a good player, but... I want someone else there. Just tactically speaking, I like Varela's defense. Pesina can do everything, but also do the forward thinking side of the game, which I am really looking forward to here. So, yep, Pesina is a new Porto player. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Good night. The season is over and there is no Taca de Portugal final. I am a bit worried, but I am seeing lots of wins. Uh, let me see the league table, please. Yes, Porto first place. We do win our first title and that's a good one. Porto had to regain control over the league and now we might have finally done it. So selling some of the originals like Taremi Pepe and all those guys might have been the right way to go. So let me see one thing though. How far did we make it in the European stages? Because, oh, Europa League, round the 16, loss against Chelsea. That's okay. That's access acceptable to me. But let me take a look into the team right here. Beto, 83, not a lot of growth, 91 pace. I didn't know he was that big. I knew he was a big man, six foot four. Navarro on an 84. Let's go, buddy. He is improving his pace massively because he was terrible with it. Veron, the talented Brazilian, is doing a great job on that right-hand side. Pepe is gone and he has taken over that spot really nicely. In the middle, we have Pessina alongside Varela. That is the partnership that I wanted and I got it now. Galeno on the left. Sanusi, 82 rated. Let's go. Fice, Nelson looking good. Joao Mario is a beast and Costa is our highest rated player in the team. And we do have a good bench. It is actually not a bad bench at all. So nothing to complain about yet. But I'm sure some issues will pop up left, right and center at some point. And Navarro was the top scorer this season. A Veron. That is impressive from right midfield. Season 3 coming up. Any new transfers? I don't know yet. I'm bringing in a left back to compete for the position. So someone will take over. We don't know who it's going to be. But this is Fran Garcia. If I am not mistaken, this is the kid that now plays for Real Madrid. Which obviously puts him onto the biggest stage with a huge spotlight on him. So I do really wonder how his season is going to go. Is Real Madrid going to be sticking with him or are they going to follow what they have been apparently rumored to be wanting to do, which is getting Alfonso Davies. Yes, Alfonso Davies was linked to Real Madrid massively in the last season and uh, this summer specifically. But yeah, we will see how that goes. Estacchio, 83, GG. But yeah, we will bring Garcia in. He is, I believe, younger. Yes, he's 24 years old. Sanusi has done a good job. Don't get me wrong. So if you want to take over that position, son, you'll have to fight for it. For now, Sanusi is in there. Porto just won the game. 90 plus 10. Yes, 10 minutes added on. They have gone ahead and scored with Marcano. The old center back has gotten it done. Now, our team is in the semifinals. Porto could actually pull it off already. But only a 2-1 win late against Farense. That is a big letdown. And we're playing against Chelsea. And we are beating them. And talking about letdown, I saw what happened to Caicedo. Caicedo comes on for his first appearance for Chelsea. And instantly gives away a penalty. Yes, and they have lost the game. But we can take a look at... This situation right here. Porto is in the Champions League final. We have won the Taca Portuguesa. So now, the question is, is this a possible treble season? Is Porto about to become the best team in the world and be confirmed? Yes! 85 points. Amazing stuff. Only one loss this season. Nearly have gone invincibles right here. And the team that we put together, I really, really like. Beto Navarro up top. We have two players. One of them is a bit smaller. The other one is six foot four. That's going to be a nice partnership. Veron and Galeno on the wings. Pesina Varela. Varela on an 88. He looks amazing. And then defensively, we have brought in the right players. And Garcia did take over, in fact. Sanusi kept growing, but 
it wasn't as fast as Garcia, so he has overtaken that spot. And the bench has always been good. That's one thing I really like about these teams in Portugal, man. They have such good depth in their squads because they have so many talents coming through and they just grow alongside. So this is really nice. And uh, Nico Gonzalez obviously was a new signing, but sadly didn't work out in our starting 11. It is fine, though. We can now take a look at the squad and their performance one last time. Navarro was the man, 38-2, Beto 25-1, Veron again, incredible season, Galeno with the 11-10, Joao Mario 9-7 from right back, and Pessina, exactly, that is why I brought him in, 18 goal contributions from centre midfield, and now to play against Arsenal. Arsenal has Smithrow, Jesus Saka, Genduzi is back at Arsenal, Odegaard, Jorginho, Zinchenko, Saliba, Torres, Molina, Ramsdale. They have brought in uh, Pau Torres from Aston Villa. And Molina is the right back from Atleti, right? Interesting. Very interesting. The fans seem to back Veron, the Brazilian talent on the T4, which means he should be the man of the match, right? That's how things work over here. We are up against an interesting Arsenal side. I don't necessarily like the kit choice here, but we'll be fine. Porto, go ahead and win that Champions League trophy once more. Without Mourinho, but with me. Lovely work, Hurdegaard. Pais. Yes, buddy. Come on now. It's Galeno. Galeno sending people on runs. Galeno into Navarro. Navarro waiting for Garcia. Frank Garcia has the opening in the center. Beto, penalty, yes, it is a penalty. This one is very important for us. Early on into the game, we need to establish dominance and this could just be it. It is the man with the number 10 taking this. It is Navarro. The man that Porto actually signed in real life is gonna go down the center and just smack it into the roof of the net. Dude, who needs Taremi, huh? Who needs him? United needs him. Anyways, this is 1-0. Beautiful scenes. Porto take the lead in a European final. Let's keep this up, lads. Oh, please. Stop. Yes. Pessina. Good work. Defensively, especially. Here goes Gabriel Veron. Gabriel Veron, the Brazilian, sprinting away. Now, need to showcase some Brazilian flair right here. We get past one. Stops again. Passes. Oh, look at that. There's space for Beto. He's completely open. It's 2-0. We are tearing apart the defense of Arsenal like no one before. <laughs> Beautiful passing play, movement, everything. The goalkeeper was shifting across and I saw that. I thought, if I just pass it back now, it's an empty net to take a shot into. Thank you very much, Ramsdale. I really appreciate you helping me out here. Oh, and by the way, in the last video, there was a comment that I responded to, which said like, oh, why don't you just play until you win the Champions League final in your rebuilds? I don't do it because then you guys would just know that every time I do a rebuild, I'll be winning in the Champions League final and there's no reason for you to watch. So I get one shot, that's all, just so you know. Yes, cut out, yes, gets past one. Gets past two. It's Gabriel Veron. He's on the Tifo for a reason, man. I'm telling you. Galena's cross to the big man, Beto. And he gets a crossbar. That is the position where you need that big man. Navarro. Beto. Inside. Here goes Varela. He has a little bit of space. And he just goes for it. Why not? Oh, this is not good. I saw that run. Thais trying to stop him. It's not working. It's 2-1. Okay, now this is not what I expected. I was dominating the game big time. Arsenal are back into it. There are about 17 minutes left over here. We got to do our best to prevent them from getting the equalizer. Oh, Navarro, what is that for a touch, man? Okay, Osaka. <sighs> it's 2-2. Two -two. Okay. We gotta wake up, lads. This is not okay. 87th minute, aiming for Beto's big head. Come on now. Why is it not selecting him? Varela, win that for me. He can't. It's a late attacking move. Coming in from Arsenal. 
I do not like this. Don't do this to me, Arsenal. The move is getting scarier as we go. Oh, no. It's Nuno Tavares not able to stop them. No. Please. What the hell is happening over here? What is happening? I cannot believe what I've just witnessed. I have no words. I have no words for what I have just seen. What has Gabriel Martinelli just done to my entire defense? This is it. This game is done. Nelson was sent to the shops. Why is no one else getting close? There are no other attackers that we need to cover there. Why can't we double up in that position? It's all done. I lost another Champions League final. This is back to back, isn't it? I think it's back to back. It really is. Incredible. FC Porto, I am sorry. I couldn't do you justice. You have won the double. You won the cup. You won the league. You got control of the Portuguese league. But things have not worked out in the final for us. I thought I had it. I was so sure about it. 2-0 ahead. And Arsenal make a comeback. And this is the joy of playing an ultimate difficulty and having all the sliders tuned up for the ai to do well you just never know what you get and that moment right there was one of those thank you so much for watching i tried my best i genuinely did i'm sorry porto fans but you have fallen and uh i couldn't help you up i'll catch you next time take care and peace